right, so for this one, we're actually going to start standing. So you can stand at the top of your mat. I'll just stand facing you and then um, switch when needed. Uh, you need to play with the distance of your feet. So we're going to start to draw like a figure eight with the hips. So it's just to don't think about it too much. Figure eight with the hips. Knees can be soft. Just a little loosening up. Ha. Huh. And make it your own. So it could get, it could be really slow. It could be faster. It could go lower. And it could have the upper body moving with it. So the arms could do something bigger. Or not too much at all. Give it a few more rounds. You could take your legs wider. You could take them closer. You could put your hands on the belly. Just loosen up this, this area here in the hips. All right. A couple of more rounds. And then come to standing, maybe feet hip distance apart. Draw your breath in and stretch tall and long and lift your heels off the mat. So you come onto your tippy toes, reach everything, squeezes. And then as you begin to exhale, as you lower, you lower your heels really slowly. Two, five, four, three, two, one. You continue lowering into a chair pose, so bending your knees, letting the hands travel towards the heart, and then opening the arms wide and out to the sides, maybe a little bounce, pressing onto the feet, and then begin to draw the shoulders forward, rotate the thumbs down and backwards, and then you interlock the hands behind your back. Reach the knuckles away, a little bit of a back bend even here. And as you exhale, begin to come into a forward fold. If it's in any way uncomfortable to interlock the hands, then you could just rest them on your lower back, keeping your knees bent and just exploring into the sensations at the back of the legs by slowly straightening them to a point where you feel a stretch and then maybe bending it again. Let the head hang, take a breath in, <sighs> let it out through the mouth, let it out through the mouth. Nice, and then begin to release the hands down and release your right hand down onto the ground under your face. Keep the left hand on your lower back. Maybe you turn it so that the palm is down on the lower back and elbow is up. Begin to straighten into your left knee. So my right hand is under the face, left knee straightens, right knee stays bent, and you start to rotate the left shoulder up towards the ceiling. Maybe that left hand lifts up as well. So you're coming into a twist. Right knee is bent, left knee is straight. If you need, block under that right hand. Take a breath in, take a breath out. Rotate the top thumb, the thumb of the left hand towards the back of the mat, back towards the front of the mat. Just roll that shoulder in its socket. Back of the mat, thumb front of the mat. One more time. And then take your gaze down as you exhale. As the left hand lowers, left knee bends. And then you step your right leg towards the back of the mat. And again, right hand now under your shoulder, we come into a twist again. This time as the left hand circles back and up, and then it comes forward and maybe even the back knee softens down. So you're really curling down towards the ground. And then when the next inhale comes, black back knee lifts and left hand comes up, comes forward and down. Do two more circles on your own. Inhale up, exhale forward and curling down once more. Nice. Next time when the hand comes down, it comes to the inside of the left leg and you're going to walk yourself halfway over towards the back leg and then bending right knee, left knee, moving the hips from side to side a few times. You could keep the hands grounded. 
You could lift the hands off the mat and get again a little bit more creative here. Stay somewhere where it feels stable. And then pause at the center. <sighs> We're going to take the right hand under the face once more. So one more variation of twist. Now first the left hand is going to thread behind the right and the right knee bends. And then as the left hand reaches up, the right knee straightens you coming into a twist. Exhale, right knee bends, left hand under towards that right foot again. The back of the body rounds. And then inhale, front of the body opens. Exhale, shoulder blades move away from each other. Inhale, shoulder blades towards each other. And then one last one, exhale. Inhale, twist, pause. Maybe the hand rests on the lower back. Maybe it stays up. Or maybe it wraps around your back. Take another breath in. Ground the feet. Empty, empty, empty. Turn your gaze down. And then as you release the top hand, come and bend into that right knee once more. So feel into that hip there possible option that you stay here. Another variation of that is coming more towards Kandasana. So starting to bend more deeply into that right knee as you sit your hip down towards that right heel and I'm coming onto the heel of that left foot. This might not agree with your knee so don't tolerate any sensation of discomfort there. One more breath. And then on the exhale, I'm going to bring myself over towards that front foot and I'm stepping back to downward facing dog. Empty that breath out. <sighs> now I want to come into spinal undulation and I'm going to show you a smaller variation first. So bringing the knees down, setting buttocks back towards the heels, arms are forward. Keep the head hanging as you round forward, so like a cat pose when you come forward. Lifting the chest and the sin sit bones as you soften into your elbows, sending the buttocks back. So this is the smaller variation. Knees are supported on the ground and the spine is making this wavy movement. The next step from here would be to do that from downward facing dog. So the rounded back brings you to plank pose, chin to chest. And then as you soften the knees almost to the ground, chest lifts, you push the buttocks back towards the heels and then straighten the knees you back in down dog. So it becomes again this wave. Nice. One more. Perfect. And then pause for a moment in downward facing dog. And then take your right knee onto the mat. One more thing here for the left side. Left hip opens on top of the right hip. Take your right hand a little bit forward from the shoulder. And then the left hand comes up towards the ceiling. Comes forward towards the front. And then maybe circles down again. So once more. Inhaling. Exhaling. And the next round you pause and if you are up for a, a little bit more of a dynamic practice, there might be a variation where you pick that right knee off, you thread the right toes around that left ankle and you come to a variation of a side plank. The left arm could stay up or move forward so you really curl and arch that top rib cage. One more breath. Whichever variation you in, looking down, bringing the right hand down, bringing the, yourself to all fours, and then slowly lowering the belly down onto the ground, empty, empty, empty. Send the arms towards the back of the mat, lifting your chest up, keep the feet planted, and just move as if you want to reach to the right heel with the right hand, so squeezing into the right side waist. And then the opposite. One side and the opposite. One more. Perfect. And then lower. Bring the hands under the shoulders, a few cobra rolls. So let your head hang as if like a cat 
lifting its kittens through the back of the neck. You're gonna roll up, head is the last to lift, and then exhale, front body rolls back down, head, forehead softens down. Lifting through as if, again, you're being lifted through the back of the neck on the inhale. Exhale, back down. One more, rolling the spine, undulating. And then curling up, pause, begin to hug the navel back towards the spine. Front body shortens as you curl away from the ground. Exhale, round, round back as you come to child's pose for just a moment. And then back to downward facing dog. <laughs> Empty that breath out. Bring your right foot forward to the top of the mat. And then come into high lunge, keeping that back knee up, pressing onto your feet as you rise. Bounce a few times up and down. So feel into that rebound that you receive from the ground. And then lower your right hand and begin to kind of lean, no, sorry, lean forward through your left, right hand. So it's the opposite hand. And as if you're reaching for something, start to peel the toes of the back foot off the mat. And almost like you're not bouncing. I'm not bouncing that back foot off. I'm leaning forward, coming over. And then sending it back, just tapping that foot toe onto the ground and then coming back. Once more. Call it the running man. One more. So I feel it already in my right buttock. Next time the knees in your chest pause. Get your spine long, a little bit of buoyancy in that standing knee. And then one more twist from here where this time the right hand holds the left thigh and the left hand moves back behind you. If you can, if that works for you, if you can hold the outer edge of that left foot to stretch the leg forward, but it's not necessary. Take another breath in. Take another breath out. Then facing back forward and settling that foot down onto the ground. Get a softer in your knees. And then come back to whew, letting the hips move from side to side. Let this movement here ripple into your shoulders. Mm. A few more rounds. Maybe the shoulders get a little bit bigger. Make it your own. Maybe just make a dance out of it. Make it fun. And then pause. We go for the opposite side. Ground the feet. So rising up and lifting the heels off the mat, coming onto your tippy toes and lengthen upwards, upwards, upwards. And then as the palms touch, as you start to lower, you lower slowly. So five, four, three, two, one. Keep sitting, keep sitting, keep sitting. Pause here, give it a little bounce here. Draw the arms wide to the sides. Curl the shoulders forward. See if you can take the more uncomfortable lock at the back. And then taking a breath in. And once more, enter forward fold. To um, torso comes towards the thighs. Knees can be however bent you need. Dropping the head. Ha. Empty that breath out. Empty that breath out. One more. Now, as you lower the hands, keep the right hand onto your lower back. Release the left hand under your face. This time, left knee stays bent, right knee is straight. Starting to twist the right shoulder up towards the ceiling. Maybe right hand up towards the ceiling as well. Use a block under that left hand if you need. Feel that twist in the spine, take a breath in. And a little rotation for the top shoulder, so turn the thumb towards the back of your mat. Feel that shoulder curling in its socket. 
and then do the opposite roll it forward the thumb forward one more roll it back and roll it forward take another breath in as the right knee softens the right hand comes down onto the mat and then it's your left foot that steps back so right stays forward once more coming into a twist left hand is under your shoulder right hand circles back and up and then as it comes forward i soften the back knee down and i really curl down towards the ground and then knee lifts arm lifts everything gets a little bit more buoyant and then exhale there's a curling down head releases chin comes in maybe slow the breathing down once more next time when the hand lowers it comes to the inside and you come once more to that hip glide so you swing the feet you pivot on the heels the toes are going to point towards the long end of the mat and you get a little bit of that wavy movement traveling up along the spine perfect pause at the center this time left hand under your face so the left knee is going to bend i'm going to lean over towards the left and i'm going to thread the right hand towards that left foot so again i get this action that the back body is stretching and kind of lengthening and rounding and then on the inhale i find a twist but i'm more feeling into that opening now in the front of the chest exhale there's a curling in this is shortening through the front lines inhale there's an opening through the front lines and back lines are shortening and i do that little knee bend to kind of keep the hips interested as well one more let yourself pause in the twist see if it's uh, maybe more comfortable to look down rather than trying to look up or maybe more leveled with the eyes the gaze maybe you prefer to point the thumb back and wrap the hand around your back give it one more breath turn your gaze down lower the arms your variation of skandhasana so maybe it's simply the knee bends what we've been doing maybe it's more sitting a little bit deeper taking care of the knee nothing hurts breath and then almost using again a little bit of a bounce off the ground as you come forward to the top and you step to down dog either that variation of undulating spine with knees down so curling from here or from downward facing dog curling forward to plank front body short and then trying to lengthen the front body as you move the hips back so again maybe not overly thinking about it too much one more boss in your talk pose take a breath empty it out Take your left knee to the center of the mat so the shin bone comes down. Adjust your left hand if you need, slightly forward from the shoulder. Curl the right hip on top of the left. You might need to swing that left leg slightly behind you, lower leg, and then right arm up into our gate pose. Circling here to feel into the shoulder, into the sideline, into the upper back. Did I do the right side? No. Yes, it's the right side. <laughs> and then pause and have it again. Either stay here or for a stronger pose, thread the left toes. So they come and thread kind of around the right ankle, variation of a side plank maybe the arm goes forward and then slowly releasing the top arm unhooking the legs and taking the knees down onto the ground as you lower 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 down onto your belly <laughs> interlock the hands behind your back 
lifting into a locust here experiment maybe lifting the legs as well so the back body now engaged the front body long and as you exhale lower this time come into sphinx pose placing your forearms down onto the ground again lengthening the front line as you draw the arms back pressing the tops of the feet down and then begin to press the forearms down curl your belly away from the ground curl your chin towards your chest inhale feel the front body lengthening as you draw the arms back letting the belly release towards the ground and then exhale round away from the ground go once more like this And then come, next time the belly is on the ground, keep your right hand where it is. Take the left fingertips onto the mat, a little bit maybe even off the mat, and curl your left shoulder up so you're coming into a twist from here. Just the right amount. So it's not in any, any way stressful for the lower back. Take another breath in. And then let's switch, take the left forearm down and then right fingertips off the mat as you curl the right shoulder. Take another breath and then exhale, lower down onto the belly. Either take a cobra with hands more in line underneath the shoulders or move the hands through the back and take an upward facing dog for two, three breaths. And then find your way back to downward facing dog. If you need to take a little moment in child's pose, then do that. Breath in. Breath out. Left foot forward to the top of the mat. Into high lunge with the back knee lifted. Finally beginning to find a little bit of buoyancy here. Settle in. Perfect. And then we begin to lean forward with the right hand. I think I did it the other way on the other side, but I think I'm realizing I like this more. It's not an exact science. I'm leaning forward and then I'm peeling that back foot up. Left hand forward, yeah. This is more what I like. Toes tapping as if they're tapping into a pool of water and then coming back. My left knee stays buoyant, buoyant the whole time. And so I'm coordinating this. The body is finding its balance, tightening where it needs to tighten. I'm not overly managing this. One more. And then pause, stay buoyant in that left knee. Make this one into a twist as you hold the right thigh with the left hand, right hand reaching back behind you. We had an option to grab the little toe side of that right foot if that works for your body. Give it another breath. Perfect, look down or forward actually, and then release. Ooh, get yourself again. Maybe just stepping a little bit from side to side. Maybe coming for a moment back to this figure eight movement in the hips. Cool. One last time we reach up. We become really tall, lifting the heels off, reaching. Slowly lowering to five, four, three, two, one. Coming into your chair. And then if you need to take your feet a bit wider to come into a squat. For me, it also works from here, but that's not for everyone. So for me, it works to 
lower, 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 lower from here. But you could have taken your feet wider and then making your way into your seat. Stretching your feet forward, bringing the right foot onto the mat. Right hand is behind your back and left hand first reaches out towards the left. So again, this idea, the front body opens, you reach through the fingers and then as I exhale, you either hug that right knee and you kind of curl in, even chin comes in, or inhale, reach, and draw that, sorry, it's the left elbow coming to the outside of the right thigh, right knee. A few times like this, so inhale, opening through the front, exhale, squeezing through the front. Inhale, squeezing through the back. Exhale, just an opening in the back, especially the upper back. And one more like this with movement. Inhale, reach. And then as you exhale, pause in a twist, either with the elbow around or hugging the whole arm around. Take a breath or two here. Crown the sit bones down. One more. Now, as you gaze forward, as you come out, either a circle over to the opposite side, and this is your counter pose here, just facing the opposite, twisting the opposite way, depending also what time of the day you're practicing. So if you want to bring more energy in at the end of the practice, slide that left hand a little bit further back. I'm gonna balance on the ball of that right foot, Gonna lift so the whole body lifts off, hugging that right shoulder blade down along the back, and sorry, left shoulder blade, and right hand goes up, maybe even back behind you. One more breath, and then exhale, lower. Join the others who stayed here in a more restful variation. Then coming back forward, Hugging both knees in for a moment and then switching sides, straightening the right leg forward. It's the left hand behind the back and then inhaling right hand diagonally over to the right and exhale, either squeeze or bring the elbow to the outside of the left knee. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl. Feel that front line of the body, the shoulder, and then exhale, back line of the body. One more, inhale. And then settle into the twist. Spine long, breath in the belly. Face back forward. Once more, same options. T stay here. Maybe it's an evening practice. Want to stay calming, soothing, or bringing in a little spark towards the end as the whole front line opens. Exhale back. And then settling onto your back. You're going to take your rest in your own time. So I'm gonna thank you here as you get comfortable and settle into a Shavasana or maybe a meditation, however you wanna continue your practice.